Thank you for coming tonight. It's a real pleasure to be here. Um, so my research is aimed at understanding and promoting healthy brain ageing. And in particular today I'm going to be speaking about how keeping physically active can help promote healthy brain ageing. So as you're all aware, we have a rapidly ageing population. In 2010, there were approximately 10 million adults over the age of 65 years in the UK. This equates to around one in six of the population falling in this age group. By 2050, this figure will have nearly doubled to 19 million, and a quarter of all people living in the UK will be aged over 65. And part of this expected increase stems from people living longer. So, for example, for babies born in 1901, life expectancy was 45 years for males and 49 years for females. For babies born in 2014, life expectancy is 80 years for males and 83 years for females. And amazingly, one in three babies born this year is predicted to reach their 100th birthday. But an important issue is whether an ageing population can be a positive thing, both for the individuals and for society as a whole. So, for example, how many of you would like to reach your 100th birthday? Okay, that's around 50-50. I uh, gave this talk, a similar talk to a class of nine-year-olds on Monday, and every single one of them wanted to live to 100. And I thought that was wonderful. And an aging population's experience, skills, and wisdom has the potential to be a fantastic resource for society. But a major challenge is to reduce the prevalence of age-associated illnesses to allow people to live well as well as live longer. And a key factor in keeping it healthy as we get older is physical activity. So how many of you think that you get enough exercise for someone of your age? Okay, that's over half, so we've got an active bunch. So we'll see if that changes after I tell you what we should be doing. Um, so we should... The, the guidelines are the same whether you're 18 years old or whether you're 80 years old, as long as you don't have any medical problems that prevent you from exercising. And we should all be doing some sort of aerobic activity. So aerobic activity is anything that raises the heart rate. And it's recommended that we do 150 minutes of moderate intensity aerobic activity, such as brisk walking, playing golf, or cycling on the flat a week, or 75 minutes a week of more intensive um, exercise. So this can be things like rowing, running, playing singles tennis, or um, doing front crawl in the swimming pool. It's also recommended that we do muscle strengthening activities on two or more days a week. Now, this doesn't have to be lifting big weights, but it also includes activities such as yoga. So now if we do another poll, so how many people do meet these guidelines? Okay, so very slightly less, but still very active. And here's a graph to show that overall in the UK, the percentage of people who state that they meet these recommended levels by age group. Um, so the number meeting these guidelines declines greatly with age. So it starts off around 50% of men and around a third of women in their 20s meet these guidelines. And then this drops down to under 20% of those aged over 65 and under 10% of people aged over 75. And we know if more people met these guidelines, then it could have a massive impact on public health. So we know that keeping active can help reduce the prevalence of heart attacks, of stroke, and of some cancers. But it's also um, believed that um, keeping physically active can have a great impact on cognitive health. So it's estimated that worldwide, a reduction in physical activity by 25% could prevent nearly one million cases of Alzheimer's disease. And we want to understand why it is that physical activity has such benefits on cognitive health and how exercise affects the brain. So to do this, we designed a study where we recruited adults over the age of 60 years um, who weren't currently meeting these guidelines. And all participants had an MRI scan, they had cognitive testing and a fitness test at the start of the study. Then we split the participants into two groups. Half of the group... Um, were given an exercise program for 12 weeks, and this involved cycling at a gym three times a week. Um, the other half were just placed on a waiting list and asked not to begin any exercise program in this time. After these 12 weeks, everyone had a second scan, cognitive testing, and a fitness test. And then after these assessments, 
The exercise group weren't offered any further sessions, but they were able to continue exercising if they wished, and the waiting list group were um, given the supervised exercise programme. And then finally, all of our participants had a final MRI scan, cognitive testing, and fitness test. And here's a video showing one of our participants, um, who I think is here tonight. And here's the bicycle that we use for these fitness tests. And we'd start our participants off quite gently, um, but every two minutes we'd increase the resistance. So it was like you're going up an increasingly steep hill. Um, and we'd be encouraging them to keep going until they'd reached their maximum. And then we'd also give MRI base scans at each of these time points so that we can look at the structure and the function of the brain. And on average, our participants spent around 17 hours cycling in the gym over the course of the study. They burnt around 9,000 calories in the process, and their fitness levels went up by a really impressive 15%. And with regard to the MRI brain scans, we were particularly interested in looking at, stru looking at a structure in the brain called the hippocampus. So this is one of our participants' um, structural MRI scans, and this movie moves through the brain, going from right to the left. And here you can see, then the structure here in orange, I'll pause it when it comes around again, um, is a structure called the hippocampus. So you can see it here. And this structure is a key structure involved with memory. And after the age of 60, it starts to shrink each year. And in Alzheimer's disease, the rate of decline in volume is around three times as fast as in healthy ageing. And we're able to use these MRI scans to reconstruct the hippocampus and look at how its size changed with an exercise programme. And we have preliminary findings showing that there is an increase in volume of the front portion of this structure um, following the exercise programme. So here's a graph to display this, and I'll just talk you through it. So... Here, the first, these are the exercise group. So in orange, over the first 12 weeks of the study, the, the volume went up by over 1% on average. And then in the second 12 weeks of the um, study, this change was maintained. And then in the waiting list group, you can see there's a decline in volume, which is what we expect just to happen over time in the first 12 weeks. But then over the second 12 weeks, that decline is reversed. And they're into the positive values again in general. Now this is a preliminary finding at the moment but it's a really exciting finding and it illustrates that the brain is able to adapt and change as we get older in response to interventions like physical activity. So we're currently doing more work on these findings and to finish I'd just like to say a big thank you to all the participants who have took part in our study and other studies. This research it simply isn't possible without you, and we really appreciate it. And if you're interested in finding out more, I'm sure you've um, heard about loads of things going on with the stands, but just to highlight two events. On Saturday the 28th, there's an Alzheimer's Research UK Open Day um, featuring talks and also a Dementia Friends information session. And on Monday the 30th, together with Science Oxford, we're putting on a screening of the Age of Champions in Chipping Norton. And... Um, these tickets for this are free, but you need to book through the box office. And to give you a taster, I'll show you some clips from the trailer of Age of Champions. So this is a documentary about the Senior Olympics, which happens um, in the States every two years. So there's 300,000 um, 300, seniors coming to this event. And this documentary follows them through, follows the, the people doing high jump, long jump, um, this guy play, uh, throws the javelin and the discus. It's quite an uplifting film. These are two brothers um, who are swimmers, um, and it charts them and that they grew up in Washington and were only able to swim in, outside the Washington Monument because of seg segregation, and now they're representing Washington in the sen Senior Olympics. This guy here is 100 years old playing tennis. <laughs> Um, is saying that he's um, playing a youngster because he's matched up against someone who's 94. Um, <laughs> so we follow him and how far he gets through his daughter there, um, cheering him on. <laughs> this guy's trying to break the uh, world pole vault record for the over 80s. And then finally we, have, we follow a team of uh, basketball players. So the team in white, they tend to you know, try and play fair. Um, but the team in uh, turquoise uh, play a bit more of a muscle game. <laughs> 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 
so if you're interested in seeing the entire film, then it's a week on Monday at Chip and Norton Theatre, and the tickets are free through their box office. Um, but that brings me to a close. Thank you.